Everyone loved trees, okay? I love trees, you love trees, okay, you better. You better love trees, otherwise I'm not your friend anymore. And Mr. Beast loved trees too. Unfortunately, Team Trees just doesn't have anything for CS trees. It's so sad. So we're gonna have to plant them ourselves. Hello everybody, I'm Prar, and today we're gonna be talking about the next step of tree evolution. So we had all these boring trees, we did DFS and BFS and all that boring stuff, but today we're gonna be talking about segment trees. And they're pretty epic. So basically, segment trees are very useful for figuring out things that have to do with ranges. So that could be minimums, maximums, sums, whatever. Right now, let's just focus on how they're helpful with sums, because that's a pretty common question, like finding the sum for up an array from this index to this index. So let's start by talking about what this problem exactly is. Let's do a ex specific example. Okay, let's say that array is like, let's say 1, 3, 7, 6, 4, 5. Alright, so we have this array here, and Bessie, being the troll that she is, wants to be able to find the sum of any range of these numbers. For example, she might be like, find the sum from this number to this number. What's this sum? 7 plus 6 plus 4? Wow, 17. Holy, I can do math. What? 17? Maybe she's she'll ask for like, the whole thing. Maybe she's a like, troll and she wants to know the whole sum of the array. Then that would be 1 plus 3 plus 13 plus 5 is 18 plus 4 is 22. Very nice. Oh, okay, I guess I can't do math. Bruh. 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 26, let's go. But Bessie's even more trouble, okay? She just doesn't want to just be able to get the sum of a certain range. She also wants to be able to edit whatever she wants. She reserves the right to edit things. Like, god dang it. So she could be like, hey, what's the sum of this? We say four. And then she could just go and like, erase this and be like, four. And we have to recompute the sum if she asks that. And it's five now. It's so sad. So yeah, so basically Bessie could either change a number or she could ask us for a sum of a certain thing. So now, like the easiest way to do this is just to have an array, right? And if she asks for a sum, we just go and go through it one by one. We're like, if you want this sum over here, we'll do one plus four is five plus seven is 12. All right, not too hard. And then if we want to change anything, we literally just do like, let's say she wanted to change the seven to a five, we literally just do R2 is equal to 5. And that literally just erases the 7 and changes it to a 5. So that works, right? But that's kind of slow because every time she asks you for the range, like let's say she wants the whole sum of this whole array, then you have to go through each one individually and that takes n time. So that's kind of too slow for a lot of use of code problems, so we're gonna have to think of a better way. Now the other strategy for dealing with this is something called prefix sums, which basically sums up all of the first n numbers. So we start from this, so for some of the first numbers, that's 1. The sum of the first two numbers is 5. And we can just keep it in running total. So 5 plus 5 is going to be 10, and that's the sum of the first three numbers. Then 10 plus 16 is 16, that's the sum of the first four numbers. Nice! Alright, so we have this. So now, if Bessie asks us for the sum of this range over here, we could take this sum, which is the sum of all these numbers over here, and we can subtract it from this sum, which is the sum of all these numbers. So 20 minus 5 is going to give us 15, which is our answer. Very cool. However, what happens if we want to change this back to a 7 or something? Boom. But now we have to change all of these sums. All of these sums are messed up now. God dang it. God dang it, Bessie. Why you gotta troll us like this? Bruh. So basically what segment trees lets us do is instead of having to do this in n time, like in our first example, it took us n time to find a sum, and in the second time, it took us n to update something. So now we need a better way to do it in log n for both. And this is how we use segment trees. So basically what a segment tree does is it basically starts with the sum of the entire array. So we know that right now the sum is 27. Then it splits the array in half. So it splits it in half, and now we have a front half and a back half. And it stores the first half and the second half. So the first sum is 12, and the second sum is 15. All right, and then it breaks it down again. Another one. So basically it divides it here, divides it here, and it says this is one, and this sums to 11, and then this sums to six, and then this sums to nine. It doesn't really matter how you break like odd things in half, as long as you're consistent, then it should be fine. And then over here, this just breaks this in half, so this becomes 4, this becomes 7, and then this gets split in half, and then this is 4, and this is 5. Alright, so why do we just waste our time splitting an array into this arbitrary tree that looks like boring and not useful? Well, my friend, Bessie can't troll us anymore. Let me show you how. So let's say we wanted to change this 4 to like a 7. How about that? So we basically change this to a 7, and then we go up from the bottom to the top. So this becomes a 14. This becomes, uh, what, 14 plus 1 is 15, and then this becomes 30. But see, we only have to change the height of the tree. And it turns out that because we're splitting it into two every time, this tree is going to be log n height. So, this is actually a lot faster than n time. So we could do this in log n. What happens if we wanted to find a sum? So, let's just at random choose this to be our sum. Alright, so we know that this 30 over here represents the sum of the whole array. But that's not useful, we don't need the sum of the whole array, so let's 
go further into this. So what does this 15 represent? It represents the sum of this whole thing. Still, that doesn't overlap with our range at all, so that's not useful. Then we go down to this 14. What does this 14 represent? It represents the sum of these two. And these two are completely in our range, and they will contribute to our sum. So we start adding 14 to our current sum. Then we go down to 15. This 15 represents V3 over here. Unfortunately, 5 is like sticking out, sticking its butt out of the range, so we can't use that sum, so no, that's not gonna work. So then we go down to 6, and 6 is completely in our range, so we, we add 6 to our sum. And then we look at 9, and unfortunately, 5 is still sticking its butt out like a troll, so nope, not 9. And then we go down to 4, and we see that 4 is in our array, so we add 4 over here, and we'll blame We get our answer is 24. Let us check that 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 6 is something plus four is another thing that goes to 24 epic so even though this seems like a really convoluted way to do it it turns out that this way to sum it actually takes log n time so it's actually really 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 fast it's insane now this algorithm is like super useful for gold and platinum like literally every problem in platinum and gold or at least every single contest at least has one segment tree problem it's less common in gold but in platinum for sure and also like segment trees are not just limited to sums okay you could do this for a lot of things you could use it for mins you could use it for maxes anything that's on a range you could use segment trees for but in general this like there's a really interesting algorithm so even if you're not like in gold or uh, platinum yet it's still a super cool algorithm to know because i don't know i learned this recently but it's such a cool algorithm, like, I don't know, it's cool. Learn it. But anyways, before I get into like all the advanced stuff that you can apply it, like you don't just apply it just to array. You can apply it to trees, you can apply it to anything you want. So let's first get into the implementation and then we can talk about cool stuff. All right, time to whip out my REPL. So before we jump into the implementation, there's one more epic thing you need to know. So we saw that our uh, segment tree is basically a binary tree, right? Because it splits into two at every point. Now there is a way to represent binary trees in an array. So let's say that we have the binary tree like 6, 5, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. Basically the way that putting this into array would work is you put the root at the beginning. So this index 0. And then to get to its children, you do 2 times 0 plus 1 and 2 times 0 plus 2. So 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. So this is going to be its left child. 1 is going to be its left child, which is 5. And then 2, which is 2 times 0 plus 2, is going to be its right child, which is 4. Then for 5, which is 1, we apply the same operation. So 2n plus 1 is left, and 2n plus 2 is right. So when our 2n plus 1, which is 3, we're going to put 7. And then our 2n plus 2, which is 4, we're going to put 8. And then same thing for 10, for 4, we do 9 and 10. Okay. So we were able to decompose this binary tree into an array. So we're going to do the same thing for our segment tree. So the way we're going to store our segment tree is going to be an int array, and we're going to call it seg. And basically, when I do seg, or segment trees, basically what I do is I make it four times the maximum n. Now, this is a rule of thumb, it works for me, but, and if it doesn't, like, if it doesn't work, just increase the array size, but just start with four, like, four times n, and then you should be fine. So in a lot of usable problems, it's 10 to the 5 when you're using segment trees, so I'm just going to do 4, and then 10 to the 5, okay. Now basically, our segment tree is going to have to support two functions. First, we got to be able to insert things or update things in our segment tree. So, basically an update is the same as inserting, you're just changing something that was nothing into something. So, we're just going to have update and insert be basically the same thing. Like, inserting something is also updating because you're just overriding the previous value. So, the way I like to do it, when you're inserting something, you have to go through, like, from the base, you have to go through it until you get to the desired position that you want to insert it at. So, this is basically the segment tree we were looking at before. So, basically the way that I like to do it is you start from this node. Now, we know that this root basically represents the whole array. So, we know that the one that we want to update, which is over here, is going to be on the left side of that because it's on the left side of the middle of that. So, we go to the 12. But then, this is still on the right side of the middle, so we had to go right, and then we eventually get to our 4. Now, we update it. Bam! Now, it's a 7. Then, we go back up to the one that we were doing previously, and then we say this is the sum of the one that is two children. So we basically set this to 14. Then this is the sum of its two children, which is 15. And then this is the sum of its two children, which is 30. Alright. Now you saw how we went down and then we backtracked. This is literally just recursion. So we're going to implement it recursively. So the first thing you need to keep track of when you're doing a segment tree is you got to keep track of which node you're at. So we're going to start from the top, go down. Then we also want to keep track of what range we're on right now. Then we want to keep track of where we want to insert. And we had to keep track of what value we want to insert. Okay, so what we want to do is if our index is in our current range, then we want to actually do stuff. Because if it's not in our current range, it's not going to affect us at all. 
So basically we can make some base cases that we are not going to do anything if it's not in our range. So now we know that index is in our range. So basically we want to insert it on the left and insert it on the right. And basically the one that index is not in is just going to die because of this case we have in here. So we'll insert in both left and right. And remember our thing, 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. So let's first do the left, and then it's going to be from sharp to sharp plus n over 2, which is basically the midpoint. And then we still have the same index, we still have the same value. And then we do the same thing for the right. Epic copy and paste, epic change 1 to 2, and epic do stuff. So basically we have start to the midpoint and move midpoint to the end. Well actually, what we could do is if start is equal to end, right, we're basically done. If start is greater than or equal to n, we're basically done. So basically, we know that index is in our range. But if our range is as one number, we basically had to change the value of our array and then go back and we're done. So if start is equal to n, then we change current, which is the current node we're at in our array, and we set that to our new value. And then we return. Because once we reach that one node at the very bottom of our tree, we don't need to do any more inserts, we're done. But also, after we insert, we still want to add the two children together. So, we're just gonna set our current seg to equal the sum of its two children. Nice! So we have our insert method done. Epic. Now we gotta find a sum method. So basically sum takes in the same things, except we wanna pass in a start point and end point that we want to get in. And I'm just gonna call that query left and query right. Oh yeah, by the way, the usual thing to have in a segment tree is to have helper function. So basically, we're gonna have a void insert, and now the user of our function should not have to worry about what car and start and end are, that's like not relevant to outside the implementation, so we're just gonna have the int index and the int value. And since we always start at the node, which is zero, at the root, which is zero, we basically have to do insert zero, and then start the zero, and end the n minus one, so we want the whole array. Let's make an int n so we don't get trolled too hard. And then we also want the same index and same value. Alrighty, so let's finish our su uh, sum now. Okay, so basically we only want to add in ranges that are completely within our thing. But if our range is completely outside of our desired range, then we don't have to worry about it. So we can just return if that's the case. So let's do that. And this needs to return an integer. So if it's completely within our desired range, then we want to add it to our total sum. And basically if our range is not completely within our desired range, then we just want to return the sum of the two that it gets split into. All right, epic. Now we just need to try it out. Let's try to test it. So basically we're going to have our int n, we're going to see an n, and then we're just going to have a forever loop so that we can test it. Now the way that Yuzuko likes to do it is they have in the first number that they uh, read into you, they basically give you a one or a two. So if it's a one, it's an insert. If it's a two, it's a query. So we're going to do int x. C in F. If X is equal to 1, C in Val. Oh, okay, we need int Val. And then we insert Val. Oh, after we need an index too. And then else we have a query, and then that's going to be basically the same except with QL and QR, but we don't need to change that. Oh yeah, we forgot our helper method. How could I forget? Alright, so I just added this to help with that. And then this is going to be sum. Alright, let's test it. Overall, I was trolling. I had an extra int any over here for some reason. I don't know why. 6, 1, 0, 1. 2, 0, 1. Alright, good. So, right now we've only inserted 1, so our sum from 0 to 1 is going to be 1. So let's insert the rest of our stuff. Alright, so now we want our sum of the total array to be, what, 27. So we want 2, 0, 5 to be 27. Not Now, if we change our thing at index 2, no, index 1 to 7, it should give us a total sum of 30. Let's try it. 1, 0, no, 1, 2, all right, let's try it. So we try a two, zero, five. Uh, oh, oh, wait, no, no, we want to change the thing a one. Bro, I'm trolling. One, one, seven, and now two, zero, five. Epic, 30. And now let's try something a little bit more cool. We want this to be one plus seven plus seven is 15. Let's try it. Two, zero, two. Oh my god, this is crazy. But yeah, you guys see the power of segment trees, right? You're able to do all these cool things. You can find answer queries, you can update it all in log in time. It's insane. Here's just a clear view of the implementation if you guys wanted it. It's pretty important to have a like good understanding of segment trees in order to do the implementation. Cause otherwise it's like really hard to remember. I try to just like memorize how to do a segment tree implementation, but no, it doesn't work that way. You gotta know how it works. Now there's like a lot of ways to cleverly apply segment trees. Like for example, one thing that came up in the past gold competition with something called heavy light decomposition. And that basically reduces a tree down to a segment tree in a way that lets you compute shortest path. Another like cool thing you could do is if you want to find the sum of a subtree of a graph, you could basically take your graph, let's say it's like this, 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 like that, like that, that. 
And then if you have this tree, what you could do is you could do DFS on it. And once you do DFS, it basically numbers everything so that all of these guys in the same subtree are going to be next to each other on an array. So basically you could do a lot of cool stuff with segment trees. I won't go too much into it right now because this is mostly focused on the actual implementation of a segment tree, but it's pretty cool. Alrighty, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want more specific algorithms, please let me know because uh, there's like a ton of cool algorithms out there. I know I haven't covered even close to all of them, so let me know if there's any that you guys want to see in particular. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.